Welcome, everybody, to our Industrial Advisors podcast. Bill Condon and Matt McGregor here to provide our Q2 market uh, recap. Matt, surprisingly, we had a pretty good second quarter. And uh, what we want to dive into today is talk a little bit about the investment side, talk a little bit about port activity, and of course, talk about some of the leasing uh, transactions that have been done. Yeah, I would say I'm surprised, and I think the listeners are going to be surprised by a very strong second quarter, despite a whole lot of negative news. I'm really pleasantly surprised, and I think a lot of the listeners will be, that most of this report is pretty rosy. Yeah, you know, the Seattle market continues to perform well. So starting on the investment side, in Q2, we actually had $193 million worth of investment sales, which is, uh, I think, a really good sign. That, that brings our total for the year up to about 768 million. Now, 466 million of that was the Black Creek assets to Prologis. But right. when you look at it from a historical standpoint, we're right on line with where we've been the last couple of years. And we've had a really strong last couple of years on the investment side. Yeah, that's right. Just uh, for the listener to understand the relevance of this number, if you take out the last two years and average it out over 10 years, we do about 600 million in industrial transactions annually. I think it's about 24 deals a year, above 5 million. And then the last two years, 18 and 19, were unbelievable at about 1.5 billion each. We had thought that because of the 2% increase in excise tax and because of the boom, two years back to back, that we actually thought it was going to be a bad year on investment sales. Then COVID hits, right? So to have these numbers come out of the second quarter, once again, wow. Absolutely. And and I would say from a pricing standpoint, we really haven't been impacted for your core assets in, in our market. That's and so right. I think that's a really good sign as well. I know you get a lot of calls. I get a lot of calls from you know investors saying, hey, we want to place money here. What do you have? What's coming to market? And so from a demand standpoint to place money, Seattle still continues to to kind of lead the pace. Very strong. I'm not seeing, you know, any change really in in cap rates from pre-COVID. Pounds per square foot, you know, seems to be very, very solid. I'd say there's a couple comps in here that were off market that seem a little bit low. You know, congratulations to Prologis for acquiring the McFarland site in Tacoma. That comp, you know, certainly seems they got a good deal. Yeah. Flat I, out. You look at that, it's, you know, 17, you know, a little over 17 bucks a square foot in Tacoma. You know, I like that play for them a lot. Absolutely. That's a great acquisition. And then you pointed out the big one that throws this number off, obviously, is the IPT Black Creek disposition to Prologis, which in our market was, as you indicated, 466 million. But even if you take that out, we're on par with a normal year, despite all of that stuff that we just outlined. Yeah, yeah. When you look at the ten, you, as you outlined the t- the the ten year average, I think the one thing that that investors are looking at, you know, more closely and rightfully so today is credit, right? Credit of the tenant. Yep. And but if it's there and and they're confident in it, you're, you're right. There has not been a change in, in cap rates. No change in cap rates. Barely a change in volume. We had seven transactions in Q2, which is incredibly strong six and q1 so we're right there with with our average you know being about 24 we're right there and i will say i don't know about you bill but when covid first hit it seemed like a lot of guys went on pause but i swear it was for like six or seven weeks and then all of a sudden they're back and so it's interesting i mean with all that's gone on and a lot has gone on in the last four months to have what seems to be pretty normal activity out there is just a, a huge statement of the strength of this market. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of things, right? There's still a capital that needs to be placed. Industrial is the highlight of all the asset classes. That's where people want to place money. And then when you take a deeper dive into it, the safe money is in core markets, markets like Seattle, Southern California, New Jersey. Investors are willing to pay up to be in those, those safer markets. So investment side has been strong. It hasn't quite been the same story when it comes to port activity. Port activity is down a little bit. What do you think about that and maybe outline that? Yeah, that's probably the only negative thing we're going to talk about here, which is interesting. We've all heard all, and we've had, what, three or four podcasts now related with supply chain. Now the statistics are coming in. So the Northwest Seaport Alliance stated uh, in May of 2020 that it was down almost 24% from May of 2019. I'll give you a few other stats and then we can talk about it. Full import decline of 23%, 
full export decrease of 15.5% through the first five months of 2020, which is the worst start of the year since 2009. We've had 46 blank sailings through May, which is a combination of COVID issues and uh, the issues that we're having, you know, trade war disputes with China. This is interesting because it kind of reminds me of the stock market. It's like all this stuff's going wrong, but the stock market is still strong. Mm -hmm. And when we, and we'll talk about absorption, we'll talk about construction, and we've already talked about investment sales, all pretty dang good, right? And then you read this report and go, how? How is it good? Transitioning from the port activity, you look at the leasing fundamentals, right? Q2, again, similar story to Q1, large tenants, still very active, smaller tenants, mid-sized tenants on hold a little bit, but but it's the story of the big tenant. I mean, we had a number of, of deals get done in Q2. Recently, we did a 250 with Scott's, and there's multiple other, you know, a couple hundred thousand square foot deals that, that were actually done. And there's a few 500,000 square foot deals that are out in the marketplace that, you know, looked likely to get done here in Q3, which I think from a leasing standpoint, will continue the trend of big deals getting done and absorption being solid. You raise a good point, and we'll get into the absorption here, but on the port, obviously that is dropping into fewer and fewer hands, right? If you're good at fulfillment, Amazon, you know, Walmart and others, you're absorbing a whole lot of activity in less hands, to your point. That's the reason why there's a lot of big deals out there. But it's just interesting with that negative of a report, I would think that would correlate to poor investment sales, poor absorption, poor rent growth. None of that is true. Right. And I think from a, just a pure fundamental standpoint, when you, when you look at the market in general, right, and, you, and, and an investor is looking at Seattle and they're saying, okay, you know, vacancy rate is still you know, roughly around 5 or 6%, right? That's, that's mm-hmm. still pretty solid, right? Yep. When you look at it over a 10-year period. That's right. When you look at big tenant activity, which continues to be strong. And it, although the smaller tenants are on pause, and rightfully so, we are starting to see some of those mid-size, call it 50 to 150,000 square foot tenants being active again and touring again. We've had three or four tours in the last you know, two weeks of buildings in that size range. And so we're, I like to see that mid-size market pick up a little bit. And, and hopefully the smaller folks will, will join that here in the coming months as things you know, settle down a little bit. Let's shift and talk about those smaller folks, because that's that is a problem in the market. So you talk about the big deals. Let's talk about absorption now. So we've got just over a million feet of positive absorption this quarter, which is incredible. Right. And again, it's big deals. We've got, you know, Amazon, Scott's, uh, Scott's took 250,000 feet in Sumner. You've got Ikea uh, for 470,000. Pacific Distribution again in Sumner for 370. Infinity Global for 200. Filson for 125. So massive shocker of positive absorption. I think most people are thinking negative absorption. So we've had a phenomenal quarter. And if you look at it, on a historical perspective, we only average about 2.3 million square feet of positive absorption. We just did a million feet in COVID, yeah, right? right? But there's another story here. So when we talk about those small guys, the small guys are in trouble. The big guys seem to be thriving to the point that you know the product is in less, less companies' hands. And so when you look at the who gave back space, we actually had 1.1 million square feet in the second quarter of give backs Over 28 companies gave back space. If you divide that down, that's 39,000 feet per deal of the 1.1 million feet. That says small companies are in trouble. You know, I think certainly you're seeing that up and down the West Coast, right? It's a similar trend in other other markets as well. Again, the mid-sized companies starting to do things again. The smaller companies still really impacted by by what's going on. Hopefully, we'll you know as things settle down, that'll. That'll continue to or hopefully improve. Let's talk about rates a little bit. On the large transaction that we've negotiated, we haven't seen a lot of movement Mm-mm. from pre-COVID nope. throughout the process. We negotiated one deal that started pre-COVID and, and recently got done. There was no change in rate, That's no right. change in anything. What do you think about rates? What's going on with them? Is it a, is it a tale of two different markets, large and small? We'll talk a little bit about rates. We obviously studied rates hard for this podcast and I see it as a net neutral. I've read a few things that said they were down a little bit and a couple of things that said they were up a little bit. But when I look at our facts and the actual deals that have been done, it seems that we are we didn't move this year. So 
deals that were getting done in Q4 of 2019 reflect the deals that were getting done in COVID. I would say with the one change in the fact that I think that the asking rates on some stuff has dropped down a little bit, but they're achieving the rates that they would have achieved. It's just a smaller gap between the actual landed deal. So instead of, say, in the North Valley, somebody floating out a 90 cent uh, rate and landing at 82, they're floating out at 84 cent rate and landing at 82. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see how you know, rates are, for the most part, on, our, on, on my end, I've seen them remain strong. Mm -hmm. The one thing on a couple of deals that have changed, and there's only been a couple throughout the process, I've seen maybe another month of free rent, maybe a little bit more in TI dollars, Mm -hmm. but not a big change in rates, which which I think is uh, a good sign for our market. That's right. Yeah. I, I've studied all of the comps in the in the South End, all of the large comps, and and I would say I didn't see one that I would have thought would have been any different in Q4 of 19. Let's shift gears and, and talk a little bit about development. We've touched on investment sales. We touched on port activity and, and, and leasing. Give your outlook on the development and where you see that headed. This one, I think Q3 is going to tell the story of who starts and who doesn't, right? Right. Because we've got a lot of negative press out there, despite our podcast, which is, hey, this is a great market. <laughs> There's a lot of negative press. So I can see some national developers go, let's pause you know, construction, but right now they're not doing that. So we've, over the last 24 months, we've completed 11,100,000 and change of new construction. Remaining product is 3.3 million feet. So not a lot. I would not consider that under overbuilt. And then under construction, we've got 6.1 million feet and change. And about half of that has been leased. So we've got a remaining 3.4 million square feet. So if you put those two numbers together of what's been remaining from the completed construction and under construction, it's a little heavy, okay? But based on what's out there in the market right now and what we're absorbing, I mean, we're talking about you know positive absorption already at an excellent pace, and we're not even accruing yet some of the large deals that are build the suits that are inked, done, under construction. That's going to jump our absorption way up. It's going to gobble some of these numbers way down. And we've got a lot of large, very large tenants in the market right now. And so despite these numbers being a little bit heavy on construction, I would say this is looking pretty good. I would agree with that. I mean, I think when you look at, as you mentioned, the large deals that are out there right now and what we have left, mm-hmm. those developers are going to be just fine. And, uh, you know, I think if I owned a site in, you know, certainly Tacoma North, I would have no problem going spec. And, and if I had a larger site in, in Fredrickson or Lacey or DuPont, I'd feel good about getting that, you know, going spec and getting that leased as well, just given the activity that's out there. Yeah. And if I owned one of those sites too, I would hire you, Bill. Yeah. To, to well, right, that and, thing. Yeah, and yeah. we wouldn't be talking about any negative absorption. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we're talking about is positive here. You know? Oh, wait, like, you're my partner. Yeah. I kind of benefit from that, I guess. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, but, but all in all, I think, you know, we're going to have, you know, we had a good solid Q2 from a leasing standpoint, from an investment standpoint. I personally think it'll continue in Q3. I think the deals that are out there, there's going to be some that get done and get inked and that will help with even more so with absorption. And I think we're going to start to see more and more investment sales here in the second half of 2020. What do you think? I totally agree because you did have a lot of deals that went on hold that were rolling out pre-COVID that got put on hold. So no question that we're going to see a very strong third and fourth quarter from the investment standpoint. And like we said, with these deals that we already know that are out there, several of them are at signature, right? And and we already know that there's a couple million feet under construction that are signed leases that will absorb this year. It's, like I said, still crazy that we're doing so well with all of this negative news. And so I think we're going to have a very strong third and fourth quarter. I just thought we were going to have a bad first and second quarter, and it just didn't pan out that way. Yeah, I told you it was going to be positive. <laughs> you know, hey, Everything uh, here you predicted yeah, accurately. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, I think the one thing that we all need to keep an eye on is that smaller tenant. And you, you mentioned the For average sure. give back 40,000 square feet. You know, I think we'll see more activity from the mid-sized tenants in, in Q3 and Q4. Large activity will continue. But I think the big thing to keep an eye on will be, you know, how do the 10 to 40,000 square foot tenants do these next rebound. few quarters? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they rebound. Hope so. that, that's a that's not a great story. I mean, obviously, a lot of our economy is built on small business. And so 
boy, I hope to see that turnaround. Yeah, I know we're all we're all uh, rooting for them. So. All in all, been a good Q2. Uh, we'll be rooting hard for the the smaller uh, companies that are out there. We'll look forward to hopefully a, a really good uh, Q3 and um, some more discussion on that um, as we you know get further down the road. Absolutely. Thanks for listening and subscribe if you if you haven't already. You can find us on all of the sources: Google Podcasts, iTunes, and IndustrialAdvisors.com. Mm-hmm.